Welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James. Here we explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today we're looking at a pen that solves a problem that you might not have even known that you have. For example, I have a pen today that is a bit of a camouflage pen. Every now and then you might see the flash of that gold toned clip, but the rest of the time this green Jinhao 95 is just blending in with my shirt, which I like. That's that's why I'm wearing it. I get kind of matchy-matchy every now and then. Uh, green shirt, green pen, green ink inside that pen. It's a thing. It's spring. But some of you want something with a little bit more flash, something that stands out, something with a little bit of bling. And yet you also want something that's on a budget. So you want budget bling. I get it. That's why costume jewelry exists. And my grandmother was a fan, I think. Anyway, this pen might be for for you folks. This is the Crocodile 218. It is a silver and gold faceted guilloche patterned fountain pen. I mean, if you're looking for something that has a little bit of flash, well, I, I think that's got it. Let's spin that camera and dive in. And here is the Crocodile 218. Let's start with that guilloche finish. You see all those facets. I'm assuming that this is aluminum or aluminum alloy. It's a stamped faceted finish wrapped around a very thin light metal barrel, uh, both for the barrel and for the cap. And it is done, I think, for the price well. Certainly gives light a lot of places to bounce off and play around. Then you have this shiny gold tone trim. You have this in the middle here with the smooth trim at the end of the cap and here on the section. And you have those rings repeated here as part of that very shiny reflective finial. And here at the bottom you have again that ring repeated and of course a place to post that cap. And by the way, it is a snap cap and it does post just fine. Very secure, no issues, no rattles. Uh, that all works. And speaking of that cap, you have a good, strong, but easily usable metal clip. You have on that clip the Crocodile logo, and then a cutout, and then inside you have a nice plastic sleeve, which does a decent job. It's not platinum levels of dry out protection, but it does seem to work pretty well. I've not had a lot of trouble with dry out as long as the pen is in regular use. This pen does have a metal section. I'm not exactly sure of the measurements. I'll put the specifications up here in just a little bit, but it's very similar in feel to the Hongdian Black Forest, but with a polished finish, so you don't get the same grip you get with the Hongdian. You do have grooved trim rings here, but that's mostly decorative. I doubt that adds anything to grip unless you hold in kind of an unusual way. Then you do have a trim ring as a stop just before you get to that number five nib. And that nib is a number five two-toned steel nib. It is a decent writer, as you'll see here in a little bit. This one is a medium. And as I pointed out in my last Crocodile review, it's very similar in style to the Kaigaloo kangaroo nib. So I don't know if they have a partnership or share a factory or are the same company. Somebody else might enlighten me on that, but definitely there are some similarities. And of course you have the standard plastic feed. Now I want to say about that grip that even though it is not matte and it is not grooved and it is polished, I've not had a lot of trouble with it being overly slippery. So your mileage may vary and if you have this pen it's always helpful if you will point out your experience in the comments below. But uh, I've not found it that hard to deal with and the pen is a decent writer. It is a thin grip section so keep that in mind. Opening up the pen you will notice it is metal on metal thread so you get a little bit of the squeak there. And once we get this open we find the Crocodile branded converter which is included and is the Chinese standard 2.6 millimeters I do believe. It is also branded on the band of the converter, has that company colored green twist knob and even a little decoration up there which is kind of unusual. You don't see that very often but it does work well and functions well and is easy to clean out and I appreciate that. 
All right, now the build quality of the pen is quite good, and I think it compares well to the pens that I've lined up for you today, including this Jinhao 95, which doesn't have the shiny factor, but is a well-made handy everyday carry pen. And I would put it right in that range, and it's priced right in the middle of that range. So what I have here to compare sizes is the Hongdian a3. It's a lighter pen. Uh, seems also to be made of aluminum or aluminum alloy. And it's a really nice pen. It's a little more subtle. It's not a subtle pen, but it is more subtle than the Crocodile. And I really like the silver theme of this pen. And it writes well. Then you have, of course, the Crocodile 218 itself and a Jinhao 85, which gets its inspiration from the Parker 51 redo in the deluxe model. And it's it's pretty blingy. Now, not everybody likes the shiny blue and the gold, and I get that. If you want just gold and bling, you go for the Pen BBS 499. It would be the king of these pens in this comparison, but you do also pay quite a bit more for this pen compared to the rest in the lineup. These three and the uh, the Jinhao can all be had for under fifteen dollars, and the Jinhao's, if you look hard enough, under ten. But the Crocodile brings with it a little more personality than those Jinhao pens, and it's something that's a little bit more unusual, writing wise. All about the same except for the pen BBS, and I just find those to be uh, a higher quality and a better experience in general. Here are the pens in their unposted and uncapped lengths and here you find that it is very similar to the Hongdian A3 and of course you can see the big difference a number six nib makes in that pen BBS and here we have the pens in their posted length and again this pen posts and writes posted quite well as does the A3 and the and the Jinhao 85 the pen BBS pen doesn't really post all that well the pen BBS though really does not post well all right, I'm writing on Rhodia paper today. Again, this is the Crocodile 218. And this pen is a 0 0.5, which is generally considered, depending on which company you're talking about, either a fine or a medium. And I'm actually going to call it a medium because the line that you see here really does look much more like a medium line and is wet enough. Really pretty nice writer and quite smooth. Ink today is Monteverde. Ocean Noir. which if you're not familiar with this ink, it is a really nice dark blue and well behaved. I think that was me. This pen just writes so well. It, it really writes above its pay grade, I think. So what do I think overall about the Crocodile 218? First, I think that for a budget pen with some interesting facets on the barrel, it's kind of an interesting pen. It's not necessarily a style that I go for all the time, but I bought this more out of curiosity because the other Crocodile pen actually wrote quite well and I just wrote with it again the other day in an ink test that I shared with you and it 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 is a good writing pen so I thought well let me give them a chance on another pen and so I got the 218 again it's not necessarily a style that would be mine 
but it does do the style well, especially for the price range. If this is the kind of a pen and a finish that you like, if you're into those facets, then it's really pretty cool. And it has almost a retro feel to it. That's It reminds me of a style that was in a long time ago when I was a kid, and I kind of like that about it. It's really quite a good writer, and I've enjoyed using it. Things that I would change would probably mainly be uh, that section, I think a lot of people, you know, they're going to find that to just be too slippery, even though, again, I don't have any trouble with it. The only other thing I would change, I think the proportions of a number six nib would suit a pen that catches your eye this much better, but that's, that's merely a preference and a design decision uh, that a person would make, and that's, that's the decision that I would make. Anyway, I think for the money, it's a pretty good little pen, and I've had no issues with it, no leaks, no hard starts, just typical, you know, dry out if I neglect it too long, but if I'm using it on a regular basis, that eh, pen works just fine. The worst I've had is a, a quick dip in the water and keep going, no big deal. It's been a pretty good pen, and uh, yeah, I like it, and I think for the price, it's really a, a pretty neat, nifty little pen. And I think some of you will enjoy it as well. What do you think? Is this a look that you would go for? Is there one of those pens I included in the size comparison that would suit you better? And do you have experience with the 218? Share that in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank you for watching. I really enjoy the feedback that I get from you both here in the comments and in emails and over on Instagram. I enjoy it, and I hope that you do too. God bless you, and have a great week.